how we trim our maple trees at Highland Hill Farm. My name is Mike Hurst and this is at Highland Hill Farm and today we're going to do a little tutorial on how to prune a maple tree. Well any tree you prune, before you start you have to identify what it is and if it is the right time of year to prune it. This is a Brandywine red maple which means it's basically a red maple. Red maples, the rule for most broadleaves, not all broadleaves, but most broadleaves is that when you prune them and they're dormant, you create invigoration. If you prune them while their leaves are out, you create stunting. Since the leaves are gone, it now is a great time to prune. We'll have real good results in the springtime as we're pruning right now. It's February. And also another really good feature of pruning when there's no leaves off is you can actually see the structure of the tree. And this one, this maple here is super easy. There's not a lot wrong with it, so it'll be real quick to go do. But it's just a little bit small in caliber. It's probably about an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half in caliber. When we judge caliber, we usually go about six inches up from the ground and measure right, right about there. I know when you listen to some other arborists, they do diameter at breast height. But when you're buying trees and they're not bigger than your breast height, how are you going to measure it? So at nursery, you do about six inches from the ground. So when we first start out, we know that uh, it has one single leader going through it. Real easy to define going up. When it gets up here, it gets a little bit iffy, but we'll clean that up as we go through. So we know we have one leader, which is really nice. We have a really nice branching right here, a real nice Y. We like having our trees start out with a Y. If we can't, then it's okay to do one side with one branch, but we try to make it as nice and round and symmetrical as possible. So we, we're not going to limb up any of them, so this is a really easy tree. There's no limbing up and there's no defining on the leader. We're going to pull out our trusty bypass pruners, make sure our blade side is towards the side we're keeping, and we're going to start doing a little bit of trimming. One thing to note, this right here is not very good, there's too many branches at one spot. We need to clean that up. In order to clean that up, we're going to go through and we're going to prune, cutting the branches off to try to make, I think we're going to do it this way this time. Make one branch going out and then we'll cut it off there. So that, that's just how we, we do it. But it has one branch, one going out, and it's not a whole bunch of branching at one spot. Here's another one. We have a whole bunch of branching in one spot. What are we going to do? Well, I'm going to decide we're going to cut this one there. Now it's going to be a couple years for that to heal over, but it's going to be nice and straight. I really like that. So we're going to prune that, and then we're going to prune that, and we're going to prune that. We have one line going on and off. Now we have to do it, you just have to go all the way around the tree and do that. You can see I've done it years in the past, so I've cut it. This has been a couple years in our field. But anyway, we're just going to go around, just continues to do that. You don't have to hit this small stuff, but before we sell it, we do clean that up so it does look nicer. But if you take everything off, there's no foliage for next spring, so that's not really what you want. So we're going to go through here. I'm going to leave a Y on this one because I like this Y. And we have a nice Y here, so next year it's going to fill in this side. That's going to fill there, that's going to fill there. We have a fairly nicely branched symmetrical tree. We're going to go right to here's the next section. Now imagine 20 years from now, if you don't prune this, what this tree is going to look like. Each one of these branches is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So what happens is there's too many branches in the main trunk at this one area. So we need to clean that up in order to make it nice. The easiest thing to do is to cut this one right here. The reason I cut that one right there is because this is symmetrical here and that's symmetrical there. So that's the one that's out, odd one out. We remove that. The trunk has the ability to go and twist around and it won't be any of the, the girdling due to branching later on in life. So now what we do is we just continue our, our uh, pruning and tipping back of the tree. Now this is going to be a little bit heavy of a hit but that is what it is. See again, there's a, too many branching in one spot, and oh man, we even have a cross branching. Not to worry, we can fix all that up. Really easy to go do. Okay, so now this is where we get to it. We had to imagine we're making one trunk, and if you have any of the little bit weird twists to it, don't worry about what it actually looks like. Always try to grab the branch that's closest to the center or the highest. That it just makes the tree more structurally sound later in life. So let's go around and a couple of these guys and now we have to be real careful we're going to bring this over and tip these guys 
Now you can notice right here, it looks like a bird landed right there and broke that off. So we don't have a, a good central leader. So we're going to say, which one's stronger? That one's stronger. We're going to subordinate the prune. We're actually going to knock these two out. And we're going to probably knock that guy to there. And we're just going to really lightly tip it, because if we don't, it's going to look weird. And that's all that I do for the pruning of it. So that's a really, really simple one. There's a really hard one over here. This one here is much harder. And you look at it, you go, oh gosh, look at that structure. Ooh. Oh boy. So the first thing I'm going to do is you look at it, step back a little bit. What's going to be the main leader to it? Which one's the best one to use for the main leader? You can see there's a Y here. There's a Y there, and a Y there, and a Y there. Well, we always want it to be the highest if we can. So this one's higher than this one, even though this one's bigger. So if we prune this one down, this would be easily overtaken. If you prune this one down, this is still going to be above that, so it has a chance of coming back. So long term, this is the one you want. So in order to do that, that means we have to reduce this one. So okay, that's fine. That's actually quite easy now. All we do is just follow up. That's main. That's the strong one. That's the strong one. This is going to be the lead. That's going to be the lead right there. Even though that one was bigger, that's going to be the lead. Oh, we'll see the branches about right height. There could be a nice Y right here, but it's also wide on the other side. So we're not going to have a real nice structure like that one over there. But we are going to remove this one and this one. So at least the main branch is about the same spot. There's too much branching going on. So we need to clean it up so that years later, when the tree gets nice and big, the branches aren't growing into one another. We don't want that. So we want to make it nice and clean so there's room space between the branching. Let's knock this back a little bit. Not too, too much. This one's going to be hit much harder. Okay, I know it's not perfect, but it's hit harder, so they're more evenly in line, more symmetrical is what we want. We want a nice looking tree, whoever is going to buy it, we want to get a nice product as out as possible as we can. We're working our way up. It's not perfect, but it's still a decent tree. I would be quite happy if I got that tree. Now we're going to work up on this limb. We're going to do one limb at a time, going around and making them into a nice looking tree. This one's almost at the size of you like to sell it. Okay, so we need to do some major pruning on this one now. So this is where it's going to get a little bit rough on the amount that we're going to take off, but we need to take it off in order to make the tree into what we want it to be. And that is a big cut to take off, but we do need to reduce it. So we're going to take that off, and we're going to take that off with the intent of probably making that into the branch. Ooh, that didn't work out well. So we still have a branch coming up. It is reduced. I don't want that growing too fast. That's the one we want to keep. So we have to do the same one for this one here. Wow, oh, there's a lot of branching here. But that's sometimes what happens with maples. And maples are known for putting a lot of branching out. Uh, I actually want to cut this. So there's too many branches at that one spot. We need to remove two of them probably. Later on life it doesn't mess it up too much. And then this one here we're just going to lightly tip. We're probably going to leave that one go because we want it to be growing faster than the rest. We've we probably won't have to stake it at this particular point of its age and life. It'll probably grow out pretty much straight. That's probably the right way to go after it. That's how I would do it. I mean, for <coughs> next year, you should be able to sell it. If you do notice, you see this coming out. All maples, it's called weeping. They all weep when you prune them. Even this one over here. But don't worry too much about it. That's just part of the nature of it. But that's how I would go after pruning a tree.
If you need help with plant selections, call us at Highland Hill Farm. We'd be glad to offer assistance.